Good to see you today. Hope you're doing well. Let's think about Samuel when Samuel is spoken to by the Lord. Today's hymn, to him, it's the hymn, I'll Be Listening. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If you're like me, probably wanted to fill in that lady's part there. Yes, for my name. If my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my robe is white when he calls me, if my robe is white, I will hear. If my robe is white when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. You might think once again about Hannah bringing him a little robe year by year as he, as he got bigger. When the Savior calls, I will answer. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation, and it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And then the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. You might consider that as just the nature of what was, what was happening in the state of Israel at that time. But here is things are about to change. Verse 8, at least as Samuel enters the picture, the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel, at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. We know what's going to happen. We read this verse yesterday, verse 12. The Lord was going to perform against Eli everything he had said concerning his house. He had not restrained his sons. Verse 13. Verse 16. Following morning, Eli calls Samuel. You might notice verse 15. Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. And Eli says to Samuel, What is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And we might, as, as we think about Samuel, think, even my name? And um, Samuel's not the high priest. That's Eli. And yet the Lord comes and stands by him. Look at the account. The boy, the boy Samuel. I was just making sure that it called him a boy. The Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. 
And what a wonderful thing. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And that the Lord calls us. The Lord calls even us. There was no widespread revelation. A lot of people didn't have the sort of relationship they needed to have with the Lord, especially, especially amongst the priests. And when, but it's time for the, the Lord has chosen now to speak. And granted, the man of the Lord had told Eli what's coming. But now, the Lord's talking to Samuel. And the Lord did not let any, how does it phrase it there at the tail end? Let's see. Yeah, it's verse 19 there. And the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. As Samuel grew. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. But as Samuel had to, had to learn, as Samuel had to learn, speak, Lord. Uh, pardon me, I keep going back and forth, don't I? Speak for your servant hears. And it's not good news, is it? Not good news. You would like to think when you hear when you hear your name, your name, and you would like to think it's going to be good news, but it's not good news, is it? Uh, but nonetheless, it's from the Lord, and so it's righteousness is what it is. It's from the Lord. And so we say amen and amen. And then the following morning, Eli, to his credit, says, just tell me what he said. And Samuel did. He's not the bearer. He's not the bearer of good news here, is he? And that's that's the thing about preaching and teaching and and things along those lines. While while it is the gospel, a part of the gospel is Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so that's a part of the message. Now, thankfully, we have hope in Jesus. So don't leave that part out either. Here with Eli, looks like it's a done deal. Doesn't look like there's anything that really he can do about it from the language that's used. And it's, it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing, but at the same time, there, there is something exciting happening in Israel for the, for the better. Because those two sons are going to be taken out of the way. Eli is going to be taken out of the way. And Samuel is growing. Growing in favor with man and God. Wherever we are. Need to follow the Lord. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.